you'll notice in that last poem, um, there's, a, there's a real simple A, B, A, B rhyme scheme. And one of the things that I thought as I was developing this book of poems, that some of the images and some of the symbols, um, you would remember them uh, through a ditty or through sort of a kind of a reference to something that would help you remember. So it's a, like a, a device to help you remember. This image means hold your tongue. Keep it away from words like no and help and God. Keep it like a jealous man keeps a pretty wife under lock and key. Keep it where a drunk keeps his soul burning on the end of a sharp stick. Once you've mastered the tongue, the eyes corrupt themselves. One failure always follows another. Be ready to defend yourself. You won't see this very often. You won't know who it is referring to. You won't know why. Your ignorance, that's what you call it, will flash like a knife in the sun. Whoever made this was where you are now. You will never know if his hand was shaking if the sound of voices, the sound of dogs, could be heard, it was left for you. Call it a gift. Your time, the mind's knife flashing, is now. There's no use going this way. There's no use going back. And because you can't retrace what you didn't watch disappear, don't turn around. Don't try to run or notice the sky, ochre, pale blue, don't pretend the circumstances aren't what they are. Wait until the darkness is complete. Pretend you didn't see what you saw. Take the first step, the only step. go this way. <laughs> you have nothing to lose. There are trees. There will be a river. Don't pretend to know their names. There will be a farmhouse, a light for a traveler. It's not for you. Wait to be seen. It will be better this way. They will have time to choose. Time to examine their conscience. 
recall the kindnesses, the cruelties. It's the story of mouth and eyes. It's the story of bodies gathered and bound. Speak of hope. Speak of better times. Then leave as if you knew where it was you were going. I should just interrupt here for a moment and talk a little bit about um, the circumstances under which I found these symbols. Um, and it was, it's really um, the kind of thing that you don't expect and certainly don't plan. Um, up in Green Bay, Wisconsin, which is where I'm originally from, uh, there is the National Railroad Museum. And scattered, maybe four or five of them throughout the Railroad Museum, are hobo images sort of carved into a piece of wood. And then it's on a hinge, and you lift up the piece of wood, and you find what the symbol means. I was there with my son, uh, who I believe was about six years old at the time, and my daughter, um, who was about two. And I was really struck by how stark the symbols were, how at first you looked at it and you thought, well, what can this possibly mean? And then you would lift it up and you would find out this very complicated kind of warning, this, um, this very compelling sense of, uh, it always felt very foreboding. I was always struck by it. So I thought, well, this feels like a very good subject to explore, to write about, to kind of uh, put my hand to. Um, so when I went back home, uh, I went to the library and I checked out a, a large book that you would see in the reference section of a library called The Symbol Source Book. And this was compiled by a gentleman named Henry Dreyfus. And Henry Dreyfus was an industrial designer, uh, but he was also really fascinated by how society continued to use symbols and images. And he and a group of, of his assistants, about four or five other gentlemen, uh, traveled around with hobos and they collected what are called the standard 45 symbols of, of hobo images and uh, symbols. And he put them in his book. And when I saw that there were 45, I thought, this is really a, a book waiting to be written. And so I set the task for myself. And it took me approximately two years to write the book, maybe a little bit less. And then uh, I worked with a couple of really wonderful poets who were very, very supportive and enjoyed the images and enjoyed the writing. Um, but the thing that I, I have to thank them for was they say, reduce the language back, bring it language tighter, shorter, make it more instant, more recognizable. Make the language almost as immediate as the symbol because that's how that relationship needs to be built. And that was tremendous advice. It really guided me and uh, there were uh, just a ton of wonderful poets to look at to kind of explore that image. A judge lives here. This is the smoke from his chimney. Judges are always burning papers. This is the hair of the Negro woman who did his washing, who carried his child. Judges can't keep it in their pants. This is a spring from the bed where he held her down. Judges take what they want. This is the coil of rope she twisted around his neck. Judges twist and turn 